Hey up guys, welcome to today's lesson. In this lesson, I'm going to be showing you how to take the E shape from the cage chord system and move that up the neck in the key of E major. Now normally, moving chords up the neck means you are playing bar chords. None of these are gonna be bar chords. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change these chords into seventh voicings. And in this video, you will learn four shapes that sound awesome. This is going to enable you to play some really cool and slinky soulful chord progressions. So let's crack on. Like I say in this before, this is the E shape chord. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play this at the fifth position. I'm gonna play it just here. You can see this is an E shape. If I put that bar chord on there, I take the bar off, I slide it down here, you should be able to see that there, there is an E-shaped chord. If I switch my fingers back round, now you should super be able to see that that's an E-shaped chord. So the reason I'm doing it here is to show you that it isn't reliant on the bar. One thing you should know about the E major shape is that the three fingers that you have on that aren't the bar, these go in the order 5R3. Now if you watched any of my other videos, you'll know that I talk about 5R3 often because the 5R3 patterns are landmarks for adapting your chords and your scales and your arpeggios. So this 5R3 pattern here, essentially if I take this three, lower it one by flattening it, this chord becomes minor. Now by doing the same thing here with the root note, 5R with the root note, if I take it down, I get a major seven. If I take it down again, I get a flat seven, also known as a minor seven. Now what is cool about that is it means that you can take one shape and you can turn it into a multitude of other shapes. You just need to know the formulas for those shapes. And the way we think about it is we think about, well, what's the triad and what is the seventh? Now with a major triad, we have two options of seventh. We could have a major triad with a major seventh, which gives us a major seven chord, or we can have a major triad with a minor seventh, which gives us a dominant seventh. But as you can see, those guys there were still bar chords. We don't want to be learning bar chords. We're going to simplify them down to the bare essentials. These bare essential chords are called shell chords. So if I can do that with the major, I can do it with a minor. By taking that root note down, then I get a minor chord with a minor seven. We're not gonna call it minor minor seven, we just call it minor seven. And as you can see, that chord has got a bar as well. So we're gonna simplify this shape even more. Let's go back to the major seven. There's the major chord. You could try and play it as a bar chord and you'd end up with this funky shape here, but it's awful. We want to get rid of notes that don't have any quality that we want to bring to the chord. And if you remember the fifth, the fifth is transparent, so it doesn't really add anything to the chord. So we can get rid of that note. Now if we can get rid of that note, then that means we don't have to bar the chord. If you want to add the fifth, you can do, and I play the fifth here. So remember here, using the caged octaves, that's where that fifth would be. Now, funnily enough, this looks like playing an A minor shape with the second, third, and fourth fingers instead of using the first, second, and third fingers. And what I do is I reach over and grab my root note on the E string. Notice that the first finger and the second fingers are on the same fret. I'm muting out the A string and I'm muting out the thin E string and I get this lovely sound. <laughs> This chord happens on chord one and chord four. Let's look at the other major triad, which was the major triad with a minor seven. That gives us the dominant seven. Now as a bar chord, this looks like this, and it's a great chord to be able to play. But as a shell voicing, it means we can add other colors easier because of the fingering. Remember that fifth? We're gonna get rid of it again. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna play this with just three fingers. And then you can see this shape that I have here. I use two fingers in the same fret and the third finger here. And we get a lovely bluesy seventh chord. That minor chord is there. Now remember what I said, that this finger was holding down the fifth. If we get rid of that, we can have the root here, the flat seven here, and the minor third here. 
and that outlines the chord. The way I prefer to play this shape is to use my second and third fingers. I'm doing a partial bar with that third finger, but if you struggle with that, don't worry, you can use fingers two, three and four. Some people will use fingers one, two and three. It's completely up to you. You find out which way works for you. Now that we understand those shapes, we can go through the first six chords of E major, which would be E major seven, chord two, which is F sharp minor seven, G sharp minor 7, which is chord 3. Chord 4 is A major 7. Chord 5 is B7. Chord 6, which is C sharp minor 7. And then we get to chord 7. When we get to chord 7, what we end up playing is a minor 7 flat 5. This happens to be a D sharp minor 7 flat 5. If we use those fingers that we had for a minor 7, to add the flat 5, we take the 5 and we flat it. This is also known as the half diminished chord. Getting back up to chord 1, I get a major 7 again. I'll run through the full sequence so you can hear it going up in step. Now that's pretty cool. Now that you have that information, what you can do is take a common chord progression and apply it to those chords. So say I had a chord progression like a 6251. This is going up the neck. It is not going to have the most economy of movement. This is why you need to learn this idea in the A shapes, in the D shapes, in the C shapes and the G shapes, because then you will be able to tap into shapes that are close to each other on the neck. The 6 is the C sharp minor 7. 2 is the F sharp minor 7. 5 was the B7. And then the 1 was the E major 7. Now if we put that together you can hear we get Now that sounds pretty jazzy. These are good foundation chords because what I'm going to get into in further lessons is how you can expand these basic shell chords into even more lush sounds by using the extensions from the compound octave. If you've learned something useful that you can apply to your guitar playing from this video, then wallop that like button. If you want more videos like this, hit the subscribe button. That's going to tell the YouTube gods that this is the kind of content that you want to see. And I'm talking about actionable, useful guitar lessons that you can add to your guitar playing. That means it'll fill up your homepage with more amazing tutorials that enable you to become a better guitarist. I'll see you in the next lesson.